very, very happy to announce that it's a very important day. Every day of your life, the words of Torah that you learn need to be new for you, like that you received them today from Mount Sinai. So it means that it's in the power of all of the books that you're reading, and it's in the power of all of the teachers <clears throat> and rabbis and people that are teaching you Torah, to give you a Torah that will be in the level of the Torah that's been received from Mount Sinai. And that's how that um, King David could say, even on Achitofel, he called him his rabbi. And only because that he was ready to learn from him. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is saying that you need to judge every person favorably, even Rasha Gamur, an evil person that is completely evil. And it's so hard to understand, how can we judge favorably a person that is cruel, a person that is bad? As long as your faith is not complete in Hashem, so you cannot judge people favorably, for sure not completely. But when you're completing your faith in Hashem, so when you watch, when you look at people, you see souls, you see the light of Hashem, you see the holy shining light of grace of the Creator that is shining through the bodies, through those outfits, the coverings that the Creator chose to cover Himself with. <clears throat> and then it depends only in your desire to learn and in your pure intention to receive from the wisdom of the Creator. And then, Ezeu Chacham, who is a wise person, Halomed Mikol Adam, that is ready to learn from every person. Why? Because his heart is open, because his mind is open. His intention is pure, he's always willing to learn. He's opening his mind to learn and to accept and to receive. And always he's seeking for the word of Hashem. Like that Moshe Rabbeinu is saying to us, Ki pi Hashem diber lechem. It's the mouth of Hashem that was talking to you. The righteous people will say, after Hashem will reveal himself to us, the righteous people will say, Ze Hashem kivinu lo. That's Hashem, we were hoping for him. That is a word that you're going to say on someone that you already, you saw him already. So they recognize him today. <coughs> While they live their lives with us today in the exile, they can recognize him. Because when their wife, she rebukes them, they don't see a wife. They see a holy soul. A soul that is speaking words of Hashem to them. And they're trying to learn from her trying to learn the rebuke of Hashem, what Hashem is telling me now from that speech, from that word. Now a person in the street, amazing view, a lake, a spring, a store, whatever you see in front of your eyes, you see Hashem. Because there is nothing except of Hashem. There is no place that Hashem is not filling that place, that Hashem is not over there. So there is no stores, no cars, no roads, no trees, no squirrels, no animals, no people. It's all how Hashem Idvarach covers His light to serve His light in a volume, in an amount that it will be easy for us to receive, to accept, to digest, that we will be able to receive something from that light. Because if the light is too strong, so it's blinding you. And it's light. How can a light make a person blind? It's a fact. Too much light is exactly <coughs> like the complete darkness. You're blinded. You can't see anything. What's the use of having too much light if you can't understand that light? If that light doesn't get into your vessels, it's nothing for you. 
You have billions of dollars locked in the safe. You can't touch them. It's like you're poor. You don't have no money. You have millions of friends and you don't know how to communicate. So it's like you're alone in your own world, stuck in your own bubble, like you live in prison. You have a castle, you have a mansion, you have a palace, you have, you have thousands of, 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 of thousands of acres. It's all yours and you're terrified to go out from your room. So it's like you're in prison, solitary, blocked, alone, can't move. So. If you don't have the access to the information, to the wisdom, to the bounty, so it's like you don't have anything. And when you have that preparation, that inner preparation, that will to know and to learn and to receive and to respect and to accept and to recognize Hashem, so then you have everything you need, even if you're stuck in prison. Even if you cannot go out of your own house, even if you're stuck in your bed and you're terrified to go out, if you're going to just observe and try to think, what's going on with me? Why am I stuck now in bed and I cannot go out? Why am I so terrified? Why I cannot communicate? Why I cannot talk? Who am I? What's going on with me? If you're just going to prepare yourself like that, to try to receive the wisdom of the Creator, of the one that is creating your reality now in the present, to understand, Hashem, what do you want from me? If you have that will, so Hashem will answer your prayers and will give you whatever you want. Like that it's written, Potech et yadecha umasbiya lechol chai ratzon, that Hashem is opening His hands to give to every person corresponding to his will. When you want nonsense, your life is full with nonsense. Because in the path that the person wants to walk in, that's the path that they're going to lead him through. In that path. They're going to lead you. So now you look at yourself and you say, okay. But I'm standing in a certain place and I want to say that I don't want that place. But it's written that they are leading me in that path that I want to be led, <laughs> that I want to walk in. And you cannot argue with those verses. You cannot argue with the Gemara Gdasha. You cannot argue. You must open your eyes and your heart to listen and to think how can it be. If I'm standing now in a place in my life that I'm not happy, that I'm not satisfied, that I want to change so many things, how can it be that it's written that they are leading me to walk in a certain trail, in a certain path, and that is the path that I wanted to walk in? How can it be? I'm suffering. I don't want to be here. I want to go. So how can it be that I'm here? If you're really going to observe, if you're really going to look deep inside, you're going to see that inside of yourself you have a lot of anger on yourself and that you hate yourself and that you, if you had the ability to destroy yourself, you would destroy yourself. And you have many, many foreign thoughts that you don't deserve, your self-esteem is very low and you feel not accepted and you don't believe that you're worthy to succeed and to grow. And all of those foreign thoughts are also like a magnet that brings many, many situations into your life. If you feel that you're lousy, if you feel that you're a disgrace, that's how you bring insultings and shames into your life. But when you understand that you are a creation of Hashem, a creation of the Creator, a child of heaven, a holy, pure soul, like that the verses are saying. Like that Hashem is telling you who you are. You're my child, and I love you, and I care about you, and I'm going to answer you, and you're important to me. When you're going to understand that, that who that Hashem told you that you are, that's who that you really are, when you're going to understand that, then you're going to grow. Then nothing in the world will be able to stop you. Nothing, not one thing in the world will be able to hold you back from your eternal success. Because when you have faith in yourself, you have faith in the Creator. 
Moshe Rabbeinu, the rabbi of all rabbis, Abraham Avinu, the first of all the believers, and all the righteous people, King David, and all of those angels, all of those great people, they were so great. Do you think that they didn't realize that they're different? Moshe Rabbeinu was able to open the sea to half. Someone else can do that. Can you do that? Can you do that? When he was looking to the sides, even Aaron from one side, Yeshua Binun for the... No one was able to do those miracles. Only him and he can do that. And he realized that he can do that. So how can it be, Moshe Rabbeinu, that you're such an angel and you're still humble? Can't you see that you're different? That you're a man of God? That people are terrified to look at you? That even Pharaoh, he can't speak with you? Pharaoh was greater and bigger and stronger and more powerful than Donald Trump, maybe a thousand times more. No one could speak with him in the world. No one was able, no access to him. Moshe Rabbeinu slapped him in his face one day. When Pharaoh came to Moshe and told him, Mi Hashem, who is Hashem that I'm going to listen to him? Moshe Rabbeinu came to him and slapped him in his face. And Pharaoh fell from his throne of honor to the ground. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't look to the signs. He had only the truth. You know how strong and how powerful Moshe Rabbeinu was? Because of what? He was a bodybuilder. He was in the gym every day. <laughs> For 10 years, Moshe Rabbeinu lived his life in a pit, in a hole in the ground. For 10 years, he was eating only bread and drinking only water. He was in the prison of Yitro, in the desert of Sinai. And after that, for 60 years in his life, he was alone in the desert. He was a shepherd. He was walking alone in the day, in the night. He was calling Hashem and praying. Only because that his faith was so strong and solid. Because of that, no one in the world could break him. Because he threw himself to Hashem. And when you throw yourself to Hashem, no one can kill you. When you have enemies, they're fighting with Hashem. <clears throat> Like King David is saying to all of his enemies, you're not fighting with me. Who am I? I'm a dead dog. I'm like a flea. Who am I that you're going to talk to me? I'm not exist at all. You're fighting with me. You're fighting with Hashem. He can <laughs> say that because he knows about himself that he nullified himself to Hashem completely because he doesn't care about cheesecakes and he doesn't care about anything. No food and no houses and no backyards. And for you, you look at yourself and you oh no, but I care. I want my house to be clean. I want to have a bigger house. I want to have a nice backyard. I get it. It's okay. No one is telling you that you need to be different. You need to recognize the light of your own soul. There were righteous people that were so rich that you were not even dreaming about such wealth like they had. Rabbi Yudana, see, he was so rich. He was so rich, he was so wealthy, you cannot imagine. You cannot imagine the fortune of those righteous people, what they had. It's written even on Korach, that Korach, he was one of those ones that went out of Egypt. And when he went out of Egypt, the Gemara is saying, the Talmud is saying that he went out, there is an argument between the Tanaim, between the Amoraim, how much wealth Korach had? How much treasures he brought out from Egypt with him? The argument, both of the opinions are saying 800. Now the argument is saying 800 what? 800 donkeys that were carrying sacks and treasure, boxes of treasures on their backs. 800 donkeys. Or, if I'm not wrong, 800 Keys to open boxes of like treasure boxes. Huge numbers. We're talking about billions. We're talking about millions of, of, of golden coins on, 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 on the, the, the most precious and, and valuable good stones in the world. <coughs> Treasures that they took out from Egypt. The wealth that was belonged to Am Israel in the days of the Holy Temple. 
Something that can make a person blind to see all of that gold. Every family would bring gold to the Bet Amikdash, to the Holy Temple. Every family would bring leaves that made out of gold and, and, and vine, grapes that made out of gold. And they were coming and putting and hanging them in Bet Amikdash. And everyone would bring his silver and gold. and Wealth that we cannot describe, cannot even think about such wealth. Everything that you needed, you would have. You would find it in the entrance to your house. So also wealthy people can serve Hashem. So also if, if Hashem made you with a certain desire for wealth and for money, you don't need to drop that, to throw yourself to the street, to say, no, I'm going to be homeless now. I'm going to dedicate my life to Hashem. You're not going to dedicate. Maximum, you're going to buy a beer in the 7-Eleven and then you're going to try to find another job. You're not going to make it. You need to understand why Hashem gave you that desire even for money. Not to try to break that lust or that desire. When you try to break something, you find yourself with two. You're going to try to break yourself, to break your desires. You're going to find yourself struggling with new craziness, new foreign thoughts, new sadnesses, new confusions. For five years, I'm praying on my eyes, to guard my eyes, to be holy. And after five years of prayers, I can't find no holiness, no purity. And then you're going to lose your mind. What's happening with me? My prayers doesn't work. So many times I was praying, I was screaming, I was crying. As much as you work, the evil inclination, the Yetzirah is working against you. When you're fighting strong, he will fight strong with you. When you're climbing the steps, you're climbing the floors, you're he achieving the heights. Yet uh, he's not afraid of heights. He doesn't have no problem to fight with you. Moshe Olebet Midrash, he's laughing. Oh, you want to learn Torah? Great. He's got so many rabbis working for him, you cannot imagine. He's got so many Talmidei Chachamim, geniuses, that they have the Torah in their mind, and they are trapped in the hands of the evil inclination. And you're going to come, so naive and so simple, yeah, I want to learn Torah. Welcome, welcome, no problem, come. We're going to choke you, don't worry, with verses, with, with paragraphs. We're going to teach you so much Torah that you won't understand your wife that you won't care about your parents, that you won't think about yourself, they're going to stop taking showers, you're going to stop brushing your teeth, you're going to stop taking care of yourself, you're going to be clumsy and confused and lost and poor, don't worry, we're going to teach you a lot of Torah. The evil inclination is the biggest, biggest angel in the world. You cannot defeat him with simple advice, even not by learning Torah. He's inside the Torah. He's hiding inside the verses. You think that the verses that contains the word Bil'am, that contains the word Pharaoh, that contains the word Golden Calf, the verses that are describing the sins and the crimes and the, and the punishments, they're not holding, they're not serving certain power, not giving certain power to the evil inclination. And the Mishnah is saying that if a person purified himself, so then he will find from the Torah learning potion to heal himself, to revive himself. But if he didn't purify himself enough, Naset lo samavet. It becomes to be a poison that can be lethal and kill him, and not only him, him and his family and all of his beloved ones. Because the Yetzirah is dropping the world and fighting with Israel. And he's dropping all Israel and he's fighting with the wise ones that are learning Torah. And he's fighting with, uh, and he's dropping all of those ones that are, are, are learning Torah. And he's fighting the, mainly with those ones that are doing it Bodeduyot and praying and holding in the level of Tshuva and doing Tshuva. So it's like a dead end. No matter where you're going to go, you have a huge enemy in front of your eyes that it's the angel of death, the evil inclination himself, the biggest angel in heaven. What are you going to do? There is only one thing that you can do. Without the help of the Creator, you cannot defeat the evil inclination. No way. No tricks at all. You can learn Torah. If Hashem is not helping you while you're learning Torah, you're done. You're dead. You're finished. The Torah will kill you. 
He will wrap you with verses and going to throw you into the sea. You're dead. You're done. You're finished. With Torah. But I'm going to the mikveh. He's going to drown you in the mikveh. No problem. Oh, but I went to Uman, Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, you know how many people lost their mind in Uman in the last Rosh Hashanah? You know how many people? People are fighting and cursing and arguing and beating each other and stealing from each other and doing drugs and drinking alcohol and partying and doing horrible things in Uman Rosh Hashanah in front of the eyes of Rabbeinu HaKadosh in front of the creator of the world. What? Yes. If Hashem doesn't help you, even in Uman, you can be in the lowest place in Ukraine, in the most filthiest place in the world. In Uman, in Rosh Hashanah, and you're finished, you're done, you're dead. Why? Because you haven't prepared yourself. Because you haven't connected yourself with your will to the truth. Which truth? I went to Uman. Isn't it the truth? I should go to Uman. Yes, it's also the truth. You know what is even deeper than that? Not to lie, for example. You want to be a man of truth? Great. First step, don't lie. Don't lie. Don't go to Uman. Don't lie. Don't keep Shabbat. Don't lie. Start. You can be the worst liar keeping Shabbat, going to Uman every year, going to, and you are a filthy liar. So what's the use? What's the, what's the worth? What's the worth? What's, what's going to grow from your Shabbatot, from your Mikveh, from your Tfilin, Rashi and Rabbi Tam? If you're a liar... If you're lying to yourself daily, all day long lying to yourself, oh, I'm amazing, oh, I'm doing great, doing great. What are you doing? You're lying. The verse is saying, A person that is lying cannot stand in front of Hashem. You're not standing in front of Hashem. If you're not standing in front of Hashem, so where in the world are you? You're in complete darkness. You're in the other side. You're in the dark side. You're surrounded with darkness. Now you want a solution. Great. The truth is the light that will bring the success and happiness and blessing and love and honor and respect to your life. So what should you do? Say the truth. Don't lie. First of all, to yourself. Admit. Be able to stand in front of yourself, in front of the mirror, and be honest. Be who that you are. Be honest. Say, I'm weak. Say, my faith is shaking. I don't have confidence. I don't know what to do. I'm afraid. I'm terrified. I'm under so much pressure. I'm losing my mind. I don't want to go crazy. I don't want to lose my mind. Hashem, can you help me? <laughs> Say the truth. Don't fake it. Don't lie. That's going to be the beginning and we must start over. We must start again. Must. You cannot build no kind of building if you are lying. You cannot. And what it means, again, it's, it's such a high concept that you need to learn Kabbalah for it. You're not allowed to lie to yourself, first of all. And then to your friends, to your family, to your wife, to your husband, to your beloved ones, to your children. Don't lie. Don't make up stories. When someone tells you that you're lazy, don't say first, no, I'm not. Wait, maybe you're lazy. And if you're lazy, so say, you're right, I'm sorry. What's the problem to say I'm sorry? Is it too late now to say sorry? <laughs> it's not too late to say sorry. You can say I'm sorry. I'm apologizing. Yes, I was lazy. Now, after you opened your mouth and you said, I'm sorry, I was lazy, now you can work on yourself. And that person that until now was offended by you, was insulted by you, was ashamed by you, was disappointed from you, now he will respect you. Now he will give you the honor. Now he will tell you, okay, so stop being lazy. So let's do it together. So if it's too hard for you, so tell me, I'm going to help you. Now you became friends again. Only because you were honest. But if you're going to say, what do you want from me? That's it. You killed the relationship, the friendship. You separated yourself because you lied. Because you chose to be arrogant and to tell no and to stand up 
and to make up stories and to plaster your life like you don't, I don't know who you are. And that's how you lose yourself, your identity, your true self. You're losing it. But if you're going to say, I was lazy, it was too hard, <laughs> I was too confused, I didn't know what to do, I'm sorry, I'm apologizing, it was wrong. Then you're going to be a Baal Tshuva. Then you're going to find the answer in every situation. You're going to find the solution to every problem. You're going to find your way out from every difficulty in your life. You're going to find the answer because you're going to be Baal Tshuva. You're going to own the answer. You're going to know the truth. The truth is not in heaven. It's not in the sky. And not after the beyond, beyond, behind, beyond the, 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 the big sea, the, the ocean. No, it's not over there. Not after the highest mountains, not behind the, the, the hugest valleys. No, it's not after the mountains of darkness. It's not only in Jerusalem, not only on Harzion. No! Bepicha, in your mouth, ubilvavcha, and in your heart, la soto, to do, to keep. What you should do? You should be connected to your heart, connected to your mouth, that your mouth and your heart will be equal. That when someone tells you something, you're not going to lie with your mouth about what that you felt about his words. So if he told you that you're lazy, and you know that you're lazy, you're not going to make up stories to fake and to lie. Say, no, why are you calling me lazy? Because you're lazy. It's Hashem telling you that you're lazy. Hashem just used your poor wife to tell you that you're lazy. You're not in the level that Hashem will reveal Himself to you in prophecy. Hashem needs to cover Himself in a vessel that will contain the light in the way that you will be able to receive. But if you're refusing to receive, if you refuse to receive, and you reject the rebuke, so what did you reject? is the love of the Creator. Because it's written, at Asher Yohab Hashem Yochiach. Hashem rebukes you because He loves you. Because He didn't give up on you. He still got hope from you. So He's still trying to teach you. And to tell you. And to wake you up. Because you're asleep. And now again you refuse. My son asked me, I want to wake up earlier in the morning. I want to pray Shacharit. I want to go and pray in the Minyan. Father, what am I going to do? If I'm trying to wake you up and you're telling me that you're not waking up. I want to wake up early. I want to go and pray. What should I do? I told him, you need to come again and again and to help me to wake up. And even if I tell you to go, I'm telling you now. I don't want you to go. I want you to wake me up. Help me to wake up. It's hard for me to wake up. You're going to help me. Please help me. In the morning, when I'm tired, when I don't have the power, I can tell him, no, don't wake me up. I'd rather to sleep. But when I'm awake, I want to be awake. When I'm asleep, I want to be asleep. But then when I'm awake, that's the time to take decisions that's going to save me from my deep sleep. You know what happened <laughs> in the next day? I've been woke up from heaven before of him. And I went and I woke him up. Because when you say the truth, Hashem is helping you to wake up early and to find power. When you have a purpose for your life, when you have a reason to live, so then you find the power, enormous power, gigantic and huge, impossible to understand amounts of, of power. Like when you open the new business, you're not hungry. You're not tired. You don't care what you wear. You don't care how you look. Why? Because you invested thousands and thousands in that business. And that business must go on and succeed and, and, and be amazing. And so you're going to put everything you have in it and it happens automatically. When you found your shiduch and she's amazing and you say, Hey, come on, I must succeed. Suddenly you find inside of yourself tons of, 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 of advice. And, and wisdom, and you know how to do, and you understand and everything, and you're ready to learn, and you're waking up early in the morning, and you prepare yourself. Why? Because you want to get married, you want to build a house. Great. So now all of your sadness is not because you lack of money, it's not because you're not married, it's not because you don't have a house, it's because you don't have the motivation. 
because you don't have a purpose to your life. So you're going to say, but if I would be married, I would have a reason to live. If I would have a house, I would have. If I would have children, that's a lie. That's another lie. A person with a purpose doesn't need anything to serve and to wake up and to do and to build. And you need to build. If you want to be in touch with Hashem, you can do that. If you want to feel honest and good with yourself, you should do that. You should work with yourself. You should be your own best friend. You should sell your mind. You should work on your own wisdom. You should straight up your own heart. You should bring yourself to that place that you'll have a purpose. So ask yourself, what's going to make my day fantastic, amazing, inspiring? What do I really want to do? And then go and do that. And don't stop, even if it's going to take you 30 years or 70 years of your life. Moshe Rabbeinu was praying for 60 years of his life in the desert of Sinai. Only after 60 years of him being in the desert, calling and crying and praying and screaming to Hashem on the redemption, on the salvation of his nation, of his people, only then Hashem revealed himself to him in the burning bush, in the cave on the, on the side of, of the mountain of Sinai. After 60 years of Moshe praying and not being answered. 60 years of his life. And he didn't back off. And if Hashem wouldn't answer after 60 years, Moshe Rabbeinu would continue. When Moshe Rabbeinu went up on Mount Sinai and prayed to Hashem Barach to forgive on that horrible sin of the golden calf, Hashem Yitbarach answered to him after 40 days. 40 days that in those 40 days Moshe was not eating and was not drinking. He was not sleeping. He was not going to the mikveh. He was not sitting and learning Shnai Mikra Vechat Targum. He was not doing one hour in Bodedut. He was not going to Um and Rosh Hashanah. He was just standing and screaming and screaming and screaming and explaining and giving another reasons and another and another arguments and another praises to Hashem and, and another request and begging and, and hoping and yearning and crying and, 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 and whispering and shouting and standing quiet and thinking, what's going to be my next sentence? What else I can do? And he didn't matter to him at all if Hashem is answering him or not because he had his intention he had his will he set a goal and he was ready to die for that goal and when Hashem said to him I'm not forgiving I'm killing them all Moshe Rabbeinu told him okay so you can start with me kill me first Orgeni Narog you're more than welcome to kill me first not afraid to die, not afraid not to sleep, not afraid not to be hungry and not to be thirsty, not not to have a house, not to live in the holy land of Israel, not afraid not to have families. The tribe of the Levites, they were praised on the fact that they were ready to kill even their own family when they realized that they're sinning and they're upsetting Hashem and they're doing horrible things to hurt our nation. Only because they didn't look to the sides. They couldn't care less who is he, yes or no, my family, not family, not looking. Looking only on one thing. What is the truth? What is the real commandment from heaven? What is the real will of Hashem for me as a person? You don't need to be radical like the Levites or powerful like Moshe Rabbeinu or amazing like Abraham Avinu. No, you just need to be honest. To be a person of truth. To be loyal to your inner voice. When your inner voice tells you that you're selfish, you need to stand and to be able to admit and to say, I'm selfish. When your inner voice is telling you that you just lied, you just need to be strong enough to admit and to say, I'm sorry, it wasn't the truth. And now to say the truth, that's a hero. That's the level of a Baal Tshuva. That a person that can come back to Hashem. A person that can come back to Hashem will be remor rewarded 
in a higher level than a complete righteous man that never sinned in his life. Never, ever sinned in his life. Can you imagine how hard it is not to sin at all? So, it's a huge reward for a person like that, that was so strong and so dedicated and so focused and so powerful all of his life, never to lie, never to cheat, never to be lazy, never to miss no prayer, never, never, ever to go against the will of Hashem. He was never upset, he was never down, he was never sad. Talking about someone that we, we never met a person like that in our lives. We cannot even imagine. Okay, so such a pillar of fire, such an angel that never sinned. Not a person that didn't sin for 70 years of his life. Not a person that in the age of 20 achieved a certain level that from that level he never sinned again. No, we're talking about someone that never had foreign thoughts against, against Hashem. Okay, now that angel will be rewarded, right? How much he going to receive? If he never messed up, if he never did anything wrong, so how much he should receive? Everything that can be given, right? Because he never messed up. So you cannot dedicate, you cannot deduct anything from him, from his reward. Because he was perfect Tzadik Gamur, a perfect righteous man. So his reward will be endless. Now a Baal Tshuva, a criminal like me, coming back after 20 years of party. Yeah, oh, all right, that looks nice. Okay, you know what, I'm going to start, I'm going to start putting fill in. I went once to a rabbi when I, like, first steps of my Tshuva, in the, in the market in, in Jerusalem, Shuk Machni Yuda, there is an um, amazing righteous man, a very hidden righteous man. His name is Yosef, Rabbi Yosef Raphael. He is a very powerful person. He was a butcher, and his father was a very holy man, and they had their store. And one day, that uh, Rabbi Yosef Raphael, he, he, uh, he was working with his father in their store, and uh, in a per certain period of time in his life, he was driving a, a taxi a cab. And one day someone called him, like the taxi, and he came and he, where do you want me to take you? So he told me, take me to Netivot, the Baba Sali. We're talking 40, 50 years ago. And he drove him to the Baba Sali, and that person went out to meet the Baba Sali. And Rabbi Yosef, Yosef Rafael, the, the, the cab driver, is sitting in the, in the cab, waiting for him. That person went, got inside to the Baba Sali. The Baba Sali looked at him, on that person, and asked him, who brought you here? He said, taxi. He said, call the driver. I need to speak with him. And that's how his like, very big process of coming closer to Hashem started. The Baba Sali called him and, and opened his eyes and woke him up. So that huge, amazing, fantastic person... I met him a few times in my life. In the beginning of my tshuva, I came to his place and I was wearing, a, just, just like that you'll have the sense, I was wearing a, a, a black, black pants with a, with a belt, belt of, of spikes belt uh, and, and a black uh, tank top, you call it. And I had my tattoo on my left side, like a, a bracelet, a very thick one that I, thank God, removed, and another big one here on the back, and my spikes, and my bright blue Oakley sunglasses, and that's how my first meeting with that amazing rabbi started. Oh, and I was holding a violin case in my left arm, like, uh, you know, sick, I was very sick. And I'm standing in front of him like that, and I'm asking him questions, and he's telling me that I, 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 many things, if you want, I'll tell you one day. And, and he, and he looks at, at my tattoo on my left arm, and he's telling me, I see snakes coming out of your arm, and they're trying to beat me. And I'm looking at my tattoo, and I'm asking him, so you think that I should start putting tefillin? That was my question to him. So he told me, if I would be you, I would take a knife and take off that tattoo first. And then I would put fill in. 
Like, you can never imagine how far you are. That a righteous man can look at you and tell you, look, if I would stand in your place, I would cut that tattoo with a knife if I would have that on my arm now. So from such far place, and you want to start your tshuva, and you want to do tshuva, and you want to come close to Hashem, and you have a righteous man that is so holy, that can look through your soul. He looked at me, first of all, staring into my eyes, and he told me something. I don't remember the first sentence, but then I told, oh, he told me, it's time to go out of your nonsense. That's what he said. So I was very arrogant in those days, very Oh Hashem. And I told him, but I'm already like, I'm much cleaner than I, than I was. And it's true. I was much cleaner than I was. That's, the proof for that was the fact that I was standing in front of him. When you're climbing, so they give you the next step to climb to. So the fact that I was invited from heaven to stand in the same place with such a holy man was already an evidence for the fact that really I was... But the truth is that when I said that I was cleaner, I was very arrogant because I was already thinking to myself that I am holding in a holy place, that I'm already in some, but I was very, very far. So he looked at me and he told me, like staring, drilling into my eyes with his eyes, and he told me, do you think that now is the first time that I see you? I know you already for 20 years, and I was 20. When I was standing in front of him, I am a 20 years old person, and he tells me, I know you already for 20 years, and... I lost my breath in that moment because I knew in 100% that he's saying the truth. I knew it. And because that I had that power to accept from that moment and on his words of truth, I was able to receive his rebuke because I was not ignoring my own feeling that his words were words of truth. In a different situation, a friend of mine, also in the time of, that I was in the army, he took me to meet another Rebetzin, that she's also amazing. She's also in, in Shukh Machne Yudah, she lives. And when I spoke with her, so I was holding a, a, a she had a, a, like a business cards, a pack of business cards on her table. When I was like like that, I was I was playing with the business cards that she had on the table, and I'm playing, and she's talking, and and then she told me, you know that in one year, I think she said one year or one year and a half, she said, you know that in one year and a half from now you're gonna be religious. That's what she said, and again, like you're talking to a person with his bright blue, ugly sunglasses and his spikes sitting in front of a rabbitson and like, chilling, happy. And she's telling me, you know that in one year and a half from now you're going to be religious? All of those business cards just melt from my hands. Like I had to, to, to bend and to pick them from me. I was terrified because I felt that she said the truth. And I was so scared. So I asked her the truth. I asked her, do you mean that I'm going to have more faith? That I'm going to believe in Hashem more? So she said, no, 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 white shirt, black pants. Haredi, <laughs> keeping to all its mouth. I was de- devastated. That was the truth. I, I didn't want it. I, but I knew that it's the truth. I knew that she's not lying to me. I went back home and I cried to Hashem. I told him, why are you doing that to me? It's going to be too hard. How am I going to deal with that? How am I going to change all of my life from one side to the other? How am I going to stand in front of my parents? How am I going to tell them? How am I going to deal with my friends? 90% of my friends were not friends anymore. They fight with me. We argued and that's it. That was the end of our relationship. One of my friends told me, Are you, he, he told me, you want to go? We went out for, to a pub or something. After I start keeping, like I start putting tefillin and, and, and going to mikveh and stuff. He asked me once, do you want to go out? And I didn't want it, but I went with him. I felt like he wanted really to have a, a deep like conversation, a friend's conversation. I went with him. He told me, okay, I want to ask you something, but please say the truth. Are you about to be Chazar B'Tshuva? Are you about to do Tshuva? So I told him, yes. He said, okay, so 
please, I don't want to be in touch with you anymore. Let's not talk anymore. And it's like, I thought we were brothers. It's like if we were always together. So I, I don't have the power for those nonsense. He said, I'd rather that we're going to cut it now, early, and let's not talk. It's okay, like, good luck. And that's how we finished. Like, years of, 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 of years of hanging out together, driving, going, doing, whatever. Friends, best friends. <coughs> From heaven. And I felt that it's going to be horrible, that it's going to be so hard. But when you want the truth, and you refuse to surrender to the difficulty and to how hard it's going to be for you to deal with the truth. That's how you call the truth. And that's how the truth is filling you from inside. And that's how the blessing of Hashem Ibarach takes place inside your house. You want to have peace with your wife, in your family. You want to succeed in your business. You need to deal with the truth. The truth is the reality. As long as you're lying to yourself, you're denying the reality. When she's telling you you're lazy, if you're going to say on that, no, so you're just avoiding the truth. If you're just going to fight with the truth, when it's been said, you're rejecting piles and piles of truth that will follow that part of truth that just came into your life. And when you're going to call that truth and going to welcome it and going to accept it, it's not going to be easy, but it's going to heal you. It's going to build you from inside. When a person becomes to be a person of truth, so then Hashem is coming to be with him. And then the truth, the truth got that nature. The truth, we're writing the word truth in Hebrew, in the holy language. Aleph, Mem, and Taf. First letter, middle letter, and the last letter of the ABC, of the Aleph, Bet. Means that from Aleph you go to Bet, and from Bet you go to Gimel, and from A you go to B, from B you go to C. That's how you climb. And when you reach the middle, you didn't reach anything yet. You need to keep on climbing. The truth got that power to push you further and further toward the complete truth, the Emet Amita, the real truth. All right, you have commandments. You need to learn Torah. Okay, you're obligated to supply Panasa. Okay, you have your obligations to your wife, to your family, to yourself. You must do this, you must do that. Great. There is a higher truth than all of those truths. And that's the will of Hashem. And you can connect yourself to it. And then you can know exactly what is the answer. A complete righteous man will be rewarded in an amount that are equal to infinity. Endless amounts of reward, of wealth in the world to come. And a criminal person, a sinner, a person that was corrupt, a person that was violating Shabbat, that was eating treif, and dead animals, a person that didn't care less about modesty, that could violate all the holy commandments of the Torah. And now when he's choosing to come back to Hashem, Hashem will reward him in a higher level than infinity, than endless, than eternity. What can be higher than that? Hashem got that place for you. Ready for you. Why? Why are you going to be rewarded more than a complete righteous man? Because when a complete righteous man is keeping Shabbat, so he's doing actually one thing. He's keeping Shabbat. But when a Baal Tshuva is keeping Shabbat, so he's doing two things. He's also keeping Shabbat, and he's also not violating Shabbat. A righteous man doesn't have the desire to jump on his car and to take right to the sea, to the beach. He doesn't feel like lighting a cigarette in the middle of Shabbos. He doesn't lose his mind and he wants to smoke a joint in the middle of Shabbat. He doesn't feel like going back to the club and to the parties in the middle of Kiddush in Shabbat and he missed the after party. No, he doesn't have that yet. But when you find yourself in the Beit Midrash and those evil forces are trying to take you out, 
and to drag you back and to take you to such powerful places that you experienced, that you were there, that you tasted them, that you felt the ecstasy and you felt the, 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 the heights and you felt the passion and the heat of lust and desires and you are battling and fighting and you hold the sword of prayer in your hand. You are harvesting the enemy. You are slaughtering the evil inclination. And no one can do what that you can do after coming out from the dark side to the light. No one in the world can do what that you can do because no one was there. Now, if Hashem needs to send His soldiers to rescue people that are being kept and hold over there, they're prisoners in the hands of the evil inclination, who are we going to send? He needs to send someone that knows that field. He needs to send someone that was there. Take now an FFB, a fruit from habit, and put him in a club, in a discotheque, in a wild forest party. He is not able to go back to yeshiva in next Monday, right? He's not able to learn again. Why? Because those sights, to see all of those women dancing, and to smoke, and to smell, and to feel, and to hear gonna destroy his mind completely. Take me, that I've been there, that i done that. Put me in that party. I'm looking for one thing over there. People to rescue, nothing else. Or my way out. Because I've been there. i done that. I puked it already. I swallowed it until it was too much. And I know that it's a lie. Take a poor Hasid boy, an amazing angel, a holy child that never seen. Put him in the beach of Miami Beach in the middle of the summer for one hour in Shabbos. Put him for one hour in that beach, okay? Now, I want to see him after a couple of years. I want to see him. Now take me, put me over there. After two years, you're going to see me here in a tour in the U.S. teaching and telling you two years ago, I was in Venice Beach, I was in Miami Beach, I was doing this, I was doing, I giving classes, I was there, we were in Orlando, I met that person over there, yes, and this. Why? Because it doesn't even cross my eyes. It doesn't touch my heart. Because I was working so hard to find the truth. So when you found the truth, after putting the effort on the investigation, and you sweat to find the truth, and you dragged yourself from all of those passions and, 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 and foreign lies of, 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 of false pleasures and satisfactions, so now you know what is right and what is wrong. You can clarify between good and bad, because you tasted both. That's the secret of creation. That's the secret of the, of the ancient sin. That's why we had to go down to this world. That we will be able to recognize the light out of the darkness. So it's a general mission of human race. And it's your private mission. So you need to be grateful and thankful to Hashem. Not only on the fact that He took you out of darkness also on all of the darkness that you were and still surrounded by. Because that darkness is not your enemy. That's your armor. Those are your tools to go and to save more people, to rescue people from the darkness. If you learned how to swim, how to swim because you were going to the beach, because you were going to the, to the public swimming pool, and that's where you learn how to swim. Now, with that ability, you can save lives of people that doesn't know how to swim. But if you were too holy, and all of your childhood you were learning in the Beit Midrash, and you've never been taught how to swim, if you're going to see someone drowns, you won't have the tools to rescue him, because you can only drown with him. If you're going to find yourself with him in the water, he will go down, and he will take you with him, because you cannot take him out. Why? Because you've never been there. So that's how a Baal Tshuva is going to be more rewarded than a complete righteous man. Because you made such a thing in your life that you carved your way out of darkness, out of hell, to the light. And no one ever before made that journey. 
Your journey is a unique journey that no one ever before went in that path, except of you. So you need to work on yourself not to be confused from the confusions and not to be scared from those terrifying things that are surrounding you. And never to give up and never to back off, no matter what you see in front of your eyes. And even if you cannot move, cannot make one step, say, from here, I'm not moving. And even if you've been kicked in your face and you find yourself 200 feet back, so from that place, say to Hashem, okay, Hashem, there's a purpose for that failure. There is a purpose for that down. And from that difficulty, from that narrow place, from that darkness, if you're going to come back to your strength, you're going to make such wonders. You're going to bring down such light to such dark place that you will be from those gold diggers, from those people that are finding diamonds in the ground, because you went to those low places, to dark, those dark places, and you lit the torch of light, torch of truth in those places. So you will be the first one to collect those diamonds, those holy sparks of purity, of holiness, of Kedusha. You will be that one. And everyone in his area, there is darkness. So what you need to do, say the truth. Don't lie. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to no one in this world. Don't lie to Hashem. But when you're going to stop lying to yourself, the truth is going to shine so much from you that people will recognize you from such distance and people will come toward you. Hey, Rabbi, hey, can I ask you something? Hey, do you know? People will come and ask you because they're going to recognize the light of Hashem hovers, shining above you. That's the light of your soul that is overpowering the darkness of your physicality. When you connect yourself to your inner truth and not giving up, Thank you very much. May Hashem give you the power to keep those words and to walk with them for many, many years. Amen. Can you hear that song? Amen. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.